experts say the top three areas of growth opportunities for SMEs in the country are access to training and development, which is 95%, digitize and business, which is 93%, and access to better data analytics and insights, which represents 89%. My guest, Darlington Onyagoro, has a diverse work experience in various companies and roles. He is currently the co-founder, CEO of Aladdin Digital, an app that supports Africa's economy by providing an ecosystem of solutions for gig workers and SMEs. Prior to that, they founded and advised blacklisting, an alternative database for chronic debtors and fraudulent individuals reported by verified online lending firms in Nigeria. But Darlington also served as the MD of Okash Nigeria under Opera Software AS, where they handled business development, product development, strategy formulation and execution, and people management. Uh, thanks for joining me at Darlington on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you for having me. Good morning, our audience. Yes. All right, let's just uh, get uh, straight to the business of the day. Now, financial experts say about 80% of small and medium enterprises in Nigeria fail within the first five years of their existence due to the lack of experience and other wrong business practices. First of all, would you agree with this um, position? Okay, <clears throat> I will agree with it partially, but the, uh, being a businessman myself, all right, all right, I will tell you that some of the challenges we have is that the, econ the macro economic conditions in Nigeria is quite um, unpredictable. Imagine if you start a business two or three years ago and you have some financial assumptions, you have some assumptions and make some projections on the amount of revenue you are going to make, the customer base you are going to you know, get, and uh, the profits you are going to make in the next five years. Well, things are changing rapidly in the economy. Just imagine that Naira has devalued by almost 40% in the last uh, few months, all right? Uh, the cost of fuel has almost quadrupled in the last few months. How do you account for such, uh, you know, uh, what they call uh, unpredictable, you know, changes in the macroeconomic conditions in the country. How do you, how, how do you factor in those changes into your projections? So beyond just the fact that a lot of SMEs are doing a lot of wrong practices in terms of the way they manage their business, uh, the inability to separate their own their own uh, what they call income from the income of the business, or what they call you know cash flow. Uh, the personal cash flow from the cash flow of the business and, and other, you know, um, unhealthy practices that also SMEs do uh, in terms of corporate governance and all the rest. But the, the stark reality is that they are actually fighting a Herculean tax. You know, there's a Herculean tax of trying to balance, you know, your assumptions in when you are going into your business with the stark reality that is facing you, you know, the limited purchasing power of even the target market. So, for example, as you are targeting the middle income people, your product, your plan was targeting middle income people, that particular, you know, uh, subsector of the economy or that segment you know, has shrunk in the last five to six months, in the last one or two years. So, so, so the, the, the challenges are not just about the individual business owners themselves, but the realities on ground. And number two issue is that most of the business that we launch today are not painkillers. So when you, saw, when, you, when, you, when you design or launch a product that is actually meeting a want or not a need, you know, you, know, you, you begin to have problems, you know. Now, because of the limited purchasing power of the target market, both the mass market the, 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 and the middle income people, you realize that most people are not gravitating towards using the scarce resources that they have to solve their current needs, not their wants. All right, uh, Mr. Onyagoro. Um, the average man, you may actually go out of business with time because your business, you know, you know so, so these are some of the issues that actually affect businesses. You know, what is your, what problem are you solving? This of, uh, what, what, problem, what solution are you bringing to the issues that matter most to mm. the average Nigerian? If you can solve their problem, your business, you don't need so much marketing. Word of mouth will spread your business. And your business has a more likelihood of surviving than when you actually give it a business that doesn't solve the immediate needs or addresses the wants. Of people. I don't know if you get the point. All right, fine. I get all of that. Now, but uh, over, oftentimes, uh, the issue of um, finance and funding, uh, I always mention when we talk about SME growth and development, or even challenge, you know, if you look at it conversely, because over time, uh, we've heard um, that uh, they always have, uh, uh, they find it difficult to access and funding and, uh, you know, the right finances to grow or to scale up their businesses. Uh, what with uh, the whole uh, issues of inflation and the uh, uh, microeconomic economy issues or the central banks are interest rates hike and all of that so in the wake of all of this uh, bearing in mind all that we have in the country you know uh, do you really think um, there are alternative sources some um, SMEs can actually get in terms of funding uh, judging by the fact that uh, most uh, banks would 
give you Herculean, uh, you know, uh, lists uh, to to fulfill before they can actually give you um, credit. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, been, I've been in the lending space myself. I mean, I've been in the lending space for a while, uh, starting from the uh, the defunct Diamond Bank. I used to the Diamond Bank is the assets bank. I mean, Diamond Bank was one of the pioneer uh, risk takers when it comes to SME lending. All right. I mean, they had a product demo when I was in Diamond Bank when we were giving loans to a lot of SMEs. And the bank actually bumps their fingers. All right. Some of these guys, when you are going to do due diligence in their shop at Alaba or any of these shops, they take while well, you are trying to do inventory, inventory stock. They try to take stock of their inventory, you know, what products they have in their shop. So you can know what amount of loan to give to them. They do a lot of sharp practices. They take inventory from their, their friend's shop and they put it in their own shop. So when you come, you overvalue their current products or inventory, and then you give them five million or ten million. And they use that money to go and get married <laughs> to a second wife or use the money for something else. Okay. So the bank actually lost even billions or millions of naira in that process. So the SMEs themselves have not been helped with issues, even for banks like Eco Bank and Diamond Bank, who then were at least trying to take that risk in order to so let us sort SMEs in any way we can. But, but, but that's beside the point. The truth about the matter is that some of the financial data that SMEs are providing to, to get loan, uh, banks cannot actually rely on those data. Either they are not correct or those assumptions, like I said earlier on, are not tenable. We can't, they are no longer sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, the cash flow that you are projecting on, you can't even get that same cash flow to pay back the five million naira when I need to. So it becomes difficult. So what is happening now is that we have a lot of fintechs in that space. Some fintechs are not, you know, bringing out alternative data scoring models, all right? Which they need to score SMEs to provide them with facilities. But some of the interest rates are injurious. But you cannot blame them because some of these loans are unsecured loans. And if I give you a $2 million unsecured loan, I have to ensure that the rates, you know, cover it. You know, why they go, those rates go so high is to ensure that uh, the SMEs that pay back actually pay back part of the capital of those SMEs that fail to pay back. So that's why most of these fintechs, they are termed loan sharks. But in reality, they are trying to hedge risk. They're trying to hedge you know, their risk to ensure that you know they actually get back part of their capital. So the free techs are available to give me loans. I know a lot of them, there are a lot of mobile apps today that can give an SME 500,000, 1 million, 5 million naira. They're available if you can meet some of the basic criteria. So those are the only ways I see today that SMEs can actually have you know, They're beyond the government. You know, you have Bank of Industry, you have other other government agents that are actually giving loans. I've had testimonies from people that say they actually got loans from Bank of Industry, and I was surprised. So if you're not aware of it, they are available. I approach them with your business plan, and if it makes sense, you got All right, uh, Mr. Darling, are you still there with us? All right, I will try and uh, reconnect uh, with uh, Darlington uh, in the course of the show. But uh, sometime in June this year, President Tinubu also announced that the federal government was going to support uh, some five uh, uh, businesses with about some five billion uh, credit. Uh, glad to have you back, uh, Darlington. We lost you at some point. Okay, still talking about um, digital lenders. So it's a good thing that technology, you know, has actually uh, come <coughs> to bear or come to play in terms of uh, uh, the growth of SMEs. Uh, you also talked about how they've been trying to bridge that gap, uh, you know, that has been created for funding. Uh, but then you also talked again about how uh, they seemingly give uh, injurious uh, interest rate and uh, they are acting like loan sharks. So how do SMEs protect themselves, knowing, by, knowing fully well that they can't really get uh, from the mainstream uh, 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 financiers and, of course, uh, these digital lenders? <laughs> So the, the other thing is that the way the, when it comes to the, the principles of credit, all right, mm. credit is given you, you enjoy lower interest rates when your business is sound, all right. You are keeping the right data. Uh, people can if they look at your bank statement. Your bank statement is not messed up. There's a little sense of corporate governance around your business, all right. Your cash flow is intact. And number two, your credit, your credit score. Your people, people think that all these lenders they're not stupid. All these lenders are integrated to at least two, to a minimum of two credit reviews. And they ask you, they're going to check your, if they go out, they, they, they check you out on the credit reviews, and then you have a standing loans here and there, you know, even if they're going to take a risk, a chance on you as an MFS or an SME, the road, the risks are going to high to reflect your, 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 your kind of type of risk. All right, because this is a all right, we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back and uh, try and reconnect with Tom Darlington in a moment. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. Don't go away. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa. We're looking at SMEs uh, development and growth. We're looking at uh, funding, financing, and payment options. And uh, we have uh, Darlington uh, Onyagora with us. Uh, thanks for staying with us, uh, Darlington. Thank you for having me. Once again. 
All right, uh, we're talking about um, payment um, options and pay payment um, channels, and uh, omni-channel payment uh, seems to have uh, brought about um, uh, growth and opportunities uh, for businesses generally. How can SMEs play in that um, light? Okay, the, the truth about the matter, like I said yesterday in the breakfast show, is that Nigeria has an advanced payment system, all right? Uh, funny enough, compared to some of the European countries and some, even some countries in North, in North America, so when it comes to pay, local payments, I don't think SMEs really have a problem. Today you enjoy instant payments, uh, which means you can get paid, you know, as a business. You know, if you're a vendor to a, a bigger business, you can get paid once your invoice is approved. You can also make instant payments to your business partners, your employees, and other stakeholders. So I think uh, in, in the area of local payments, uh, I think uh, Nigeria is largely covered, you know, and there are other innovative payment methods coming up. You have access to the POS terminals. The area of challenge now is that the world is global, all right? So which means that even as a small, even as a small business today, uh, you're actually playing in the global stage, which means uh, at the wake of the pandemic, that's what they call remote work. I have people that are working for me, they're in Canada, but they are working for me as a Nigerian company. So there are a lot of businesses, so you can be an SME and then you're actually, you know, providing services, all right, you know, to companies abroad. How do you get paid? You know, our people are actually providing services for you from, from Rwanda or Kenya or other African countries. So when it comes to payments today, payments is becoming a global phenomenon. So what we need now are platforms that can help you manage your FX risk. All right, so I want I need dollars to pay to uh, I want to pay somebody in the United States. I want to pay somebody in China as a business. So there are platforms that do that, you know. And we're moving away from the black marketers, you know, where they do these things manually. You know, having to having fintechs that can actually help you make those payments through a mobile app or a web app. So those are those things are actually improving your ability to play in the global stage. So where you can stay now, there are platforms that allow you to. And people like my company, Aladdin Digital, that's what we're actually building. We're building a Pan-African, you know, payment platform for all payments in Africa, all SMEs in Africa. So we have one single platform where SMEs across Africa can sign up. You can do your KYC, and then you can receive payments in your preferred currency. So whether you are a Kenyan or you're a Rwandan or a Ghanaian, you will get your payments in your preferred local currency. So because we know that that is the future where all Africans can play locally and also play globally at the same time. Mm -hmm. So and Africans can start taking uh, you know, advantage of these fintech innovations in the mm -hmm. area of global payments, you know, because local payments, as far as Nigeria is concerned, uh, is, uh, is largely taken care of already. All right, very, very interesting. Uh, but uh, then there's this um, school of thought that believes that um, um, a good product will actually sell itself. Uh, but most people might tend to agree uh, that uh, still, even if it's good, you people still need to know about um, the, the, the product in terms of uh, marketing and uh, giving it um, uh, visibility. So I want you to talk to us about branding and the marketing and how um, SMEs can actually <coughs> play as well. Uh, that's a very fundamental question. You know, sometimes people uh, look at my business and Aladdin, I get a lot of calls, a lot of emails from uh, investors abroad and different people because they see we have been able to, you know, build up a brand on social media, on LinkedIn, you know, on Facebook, on Twitter. So most of these SMEs. They... Local, uh, idea of doing a business. But the reality is that today, people go to check you out online before they go do any interactions with you. So your brand is very important. All right. And these days, it's not very expensive. It's not too expensive to set up a brand. You can have one of your staff who is actually, you know, at there. A lot of young people are they're in their twenties and they're adapt on social media. They can help you create, you know, a very, you know, visible brand online because everybody, even people that want to invest in your business, they want to partner with you. They go, they check you out on LinkedIn, they check you out on Facebook or Instagram. They want to see what you're doing. So brands, branding is extremely important. And, you know, and then, um, I don't want to talk more about what we are doing, but there are a lot of, you know, there's, there's something that's actually missing today in the, in the brand aspect of Nigeria and Africa. Mm. It's called the Brand Perception Index. You know, because there's no brand perception index where we measure, you know, what they call brand perception and sentiments of the populace about your brand, how your brand compares to your competitors in the same industry. You know, people don't take their brand extremely serious. So, and that's one of the things we are building and we're going to be launching very soon, a brand perception index. We are on a daily basis, you can see the value of every single brand in Nigeria, you know, across different industries, FFCG, health, finance, insurance, and co. You can see the top 10 brands, you know. So, so branding is becoming important. Even in America, there are databases where you can see the brand equity of every brand, the level of brand equity of every brand. So we are actually want to audience as SMEs, this is a very simple. Make sure you have a very strong social media presence. 
and it's not expensive. A lot of young people who are going to offer you that service for five dollars, for ten dollars, and this is what is actually necessary. If people want to take you serious, we check you out online, and it's quite inexpensive for you to drive a very big brand on, on, on social media today. As we go, Darlington, in just some um, 30 seconds, uh, can you just uh, tell us about the prospects uh, for SMEs in the next five years in Nigeria, uh, bearing in mind technology and fintech and all of that? In 30 okay, seconds, so, uh, Yeah, thank you very much for that. But before I go, there's a difference between SMEs and startups. Okay. Yeah, I, had a, of course. I, had a, I had a talk on this like, last year at uh, Benito University. I was telling them. So most of the startups, you don't want to actually get funding. You can see that mo most of the S -S startups are getting funding. In 2021, over $2 billion came into Nigeria in terms of funding. But okay. well, SMEs are not getting the funding they need because they, are, they have not actually developed themselves into a startup. The, the key difference is that a startup is designed to grow very fast, while an SME is actually grows very slowly. So most of most people don't understand how to make that job. I had a friend that does, that does a ten billion dollar uh, monthly turnover in his business in Imo State. He actually called. We had to become a startup. He has been an SME for about seven years. So that's, you have to make that job from being an SME to being okay. a startup. And there's, there's a way to reconstitute your business to actually attract funding, and that can sustain you for the next ten years or twenty years, right. where your business has been reconstituted to become more like a startup, and then they come faster. All right. To itself, yeah. We are uh, actually out of time, Darlington, but we must say a very big thank you to you for all of the useful insights that you have provided vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, SMEs uh, development uh, funding issues and, of course, uh, panaceas for growth and uh, how to leverage technology. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Have been nice to you. Really yeah. appreciate it. All right, Dalentin Onyagora is the CEO of Aladdin Digital, and that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.